Chapter 1. Dogs, Cute, But Also Insightful They say you're either a dog person or a cat person. Of course, you can be both, but most people have a preference. Julie Clam is a dog person for sure. Unable to look a dog in the eye and not want to take it home is a problem for many people. But have you ever stopped to think that maybe dogs have more to teach us than we realize? We assume that dogs are just cute and cuddly. They're soft, wonderful to stroke, and they're always happy when we return home at the end of a long day. However, dogs are loyal, fiercely protective, loving, and empathetic. These are all qualities which humans should have, but many don't use. In that case, perhaps we could all do with taking a leaf out of a dog's book. You Had Me at Woof is the story of a woman who not only adores dogs, but found that with every dog she fostered, either long-term or short-term, she learned a new life lesson. Full of ups and downs, laughs and tears, our pet dogs can teach us about love, true heartfelt happiness, loyalty, and of course sadness too. For Julie Clam, it all started with Otto, a cute yet demanding Boston Terrier who not only stole her heart, but taught her what it would be like to be in a long-term relationship. Even when she married and had a child of her own, dogs continued to show her new ways to enrich her life while helping them at the same time. By the end of You Had Me at Woof, you'll almost certainly be a dog person. Whether you opt for a rescue dog, a puppy from a breeder, or you find your pet through other means, the years you spend with your dog will be filled with companionship and happiness. Chapter 2. Your dog becomes your best friend and supporter. One word that sums up a dog's character is loyal. Dogs are loyal to the end, and some dogs are highly protective, even to the point of not allowing another person near you. You can have a grumpy dog, an overly excitable dog, or a dog that swings from mood to mood depending upon the day. Dogs have their own personalities and moods just like humans. However, one thing is for sure, your dog will be your biggest cheerleader in life and your best friend. Always happy to see you come home and always at your side, your pet dog will become your crutch throughout life. Many dogs become emotional support animals because they're able to provide a calming and reassuring presence. Julie Clam became highly attached to her first Boston Terrier, Otto. She thought about him whenever she wasn't at home, and she tended to his every need. He had lots of quirks in his personality, and she noticed a new one almost every week as he grew older. Otto loved to play ball in the garden, and his favorite food was salmon. He wasn't fussy about how it was cooked, either. Dogs have the power to make you laugh when you're feeling down. They somehow have a sixth sense when something isn't quite right with you often sitting beside you silently, perhaps with their head on your knee. They offer comfort in a powerful yet silent way. Otto taught her the main fundamentals of a relationship. She learned that you need to compromise and that you sometimes have to put your own needs to one side, even when you don't want to. She gained strength from knowing that she had someone waiting for her at the door when she returned home and began to realize that, when the time was right, she could have a successful relationship. Did you know? According to Statistica, around 63 million U.S. households owned a dog in 2020. Chapter 3. Staying emotionally unattached with dogs is impossible. When you spend time with a dog, it's almost impossible not to become emotionally unattached. That is even harder if the dog in question has been with you for a long time or has complex needs. Julie Clam was pregnant with her first child when Otto unexpectedly passed away. There were no warning signs and the shock hit her hard. She would look at other dogs and feel sad, even wondering whether Otto would somehow be reincarnated in another dog's form. She quickly realized that every dog is different, with its own traits and quirks. I know I'd rather have any amount of time with a dog I love and suffer the morning than not have the time at all. Julie Clem. Throughout her pregnancy, she felt a huge void that Otto had left. She was even worried that her baby would somehow be harmed by the negative feelings she was experiencing and concluded that there was only one way to feel better. She wanted a new dog. Everyone told her to wait, even her husband, but a new Boston Terrier puppy named Beatrice soon joined their family. Beatrice was utterly different from Otto, but just as wonderful. The puppy would often lay across her pregnant belly and sleep next to her unborn daughter. After the baby was born, the family had to learn how to juggle caring for a newborn and a young dog at the same time. As life with a newborn became easier to manage, Julie Clam and her husband wanted to get a second dog, but money and time constraints held them back. They looked into volunteering to foster rescue dogs, and despite initial reservations, they went for it anyway. They quickly learned that it is impossible to keep your feelings to one side when caring for a dog. 
A dog will steal your heart no matter how many armories you put around it as protection. Chapter 4. Dogs and babies have a lot in common. As their daughter, Violet, became a little older, she told her parents that she didn't want them to foster dogs anymore. She wanted the attention the dogs were getting, but also, when a dog left the household to go to another owner, she found it hard to say goodbye. They all felt the same. As Violet was about to start kindergarten, Julie Clam began to understand just how much dogs are like children. They're by your side most of the day, you feel separation anxiety when they're away from you, and you have to tend to all their basic needs. She thought back to how she felt when Otto was alive, and she drew significant similarities between caring for Otto and Violet, despite one being a dog and one being a human. Having a dog is a full-time job. There are major similarities between children and dogs, so don't assume it's going to be easy. Perhaps this is why so many people underestimate the responsibility that comes with having a dog. Yes, they look cute and they like to play in the garden, but you also need to make sure that they're eating correctly, getting enough water, going to the toilet, as they should, and getting enough exercise. You need to look for specific health concerns and watch their behavior to spot any telltale signs that something isn't quite right with them. Just as a baby can't talk to you and tell you what's wrong, they can only cry, a dog is not much different. Despite all the times the family decided they would no longer foster dogs, they kept agreeing whenever a call came in. Dogs are truly addictive, and Julie Clam found it almost impossible to look at a dog that needed a home and turn it away. The eyes of a dog are deep and soulful. It's almost impossible to say no to whatever they want, be it a home or a meal. Chapter 5. Rescue dogs require extra care and attention, but it's worth it. Rescue dogs have been through a lot in their lives. The family often received calls about new dogs that needed a temporary home, and they didn't know too much about the dog's background. However, upon watching the dog's behavior, they could often work out what the dog might have gone through with previous owners. Many dogs arrive at foster homes traumatized by past experiences, which often shows an erratic behavior or extreme timidness. The family fostered a dog called Rascal, who was very quiet and refused to respond to his name. Julie Clam thought that if they changed his name, maybe he would start to respond a little differently, so they renamed him Moses. Almost instantly, he became a different dog. Rescue dogs often have complex needs as a result of past trauma. When fostering a rescue dog, it's essential to be patient and give the dog time. For a long time, Moses wouldn't go to the bathroom correctly, and despite the worry, the family knew that they needed to give him time to adjust. Eventually, he started to settle in and relax. This is often the case with rescue dogs, but realizing that you have given a dog a home and helped it to find faith in humans again is overwhelming. Violet had mixed feelings about Moses. He often wanted to be around her mother, and she became jealous of his attention. But she was just as heartbroken as the rest of the family when Moses escaped his leash one day and ran out into the street. He was hit by a car and, unfortunately, didn't survive. Children can often become a little jealous of the attention you're giving to your rescue dog, so be sure to involve your child as much as possible. Chapter 6. The Heartbreaking Story of the Rainbow Bridge When a dog dies, we often hear the story of the Rainbow Bridge. When Moses died, Julie Clam would often think about the story and it brought her comfort. The Rainbow Bridge is where all animals go when they die. It is heaven for animals, a holding place until they can be reunited with their owner. At the Rainbow Bridge, there is a vast amount of green space for animals to run and play with each other, and they have all the food and drink they could need. Even dogs who were sick and injured when they died are fit and healthy once more. All animals go to the Rainbow Bridge. Heaven for our four-legged or two-legged friends. No animal is left behind. However, the animals who spend their time at the Rainbow Bridge have an aching in their hearts for their owner. They miss them and often think about them. One day, when they're playing with the other animals, they suddenly stop. Their ears prick up, their eyes dance, and they run as fast as their legs will carry them. They see their owner, and they're reunited once again. From that point, you and your pet are always together, and you move on from the Rainbow Bridge together. Julie Clam has had many dogs, but every time one dies, the pain is the same. When the time comes, we decide whether or not to put them to sleep. It's an awesome guardianship to be entrusted with, Julie Clam. The responsibility of having a dog is something you should take very seriously indeed. A dog's life is relatively short in comparison to a human's, and it's your responsibility to make sure that their years are comfortable and full of joy and happiness. Chapter 7. Puppies may be adorable, but they're a world of trouble. Puppies are cute and have that wonderful puppy smell, but do not assume that they can't cause chaos in your house. Julie Clam was asked to take care of two unbroken puppies. 
That means they had not been trained in any way at all. Within a short space of time, they had made a total mess of the house and eaten the computer power cord. Puppies are constantly inventing new ways to be bad. It's fascinating. You come into a room they've been in and see pieces of debris and try to figure out what you had that was made from wicker or what had been stuffed with fluff. Julie Clam. Puppies take a tremendous amount of time and patience, but watching them grow and develop is truly rewarding. One of the dogs that the family fostered had puppies of her own. Even though the whole experience of giving birth was terrifying, seeing tiny puppies being reared by their mother was a beautiful thing to behold. Julie Clam realized at that moment that dogs are a lot like humans when it comes to looking after their young. The dog turned into a mother protector and encouraged her puppies to feed, sleep, play, and grow. Even though there were concerns about the mother's milk, the family supported the puppies and didn't want to sell them when they were old enough to be separated from their mother. So they kept them all and became a huge family, all going out to the beach together and creating happy memories. Watching a puppy grow and develop is a beautiful thing, especially when they're kept with their siblings and mother. Is that the end of Julie Clam's dog fostering adventure? No, she continues to foster dogs that need her attention. It seems that there is something very addictive about the deep brown eyes of a dog. Conclusion Julie Clam's story teaches us that we can all learn a lot from dogs, from being more loyal and faithful to how to be more loving and patient. Dogs are quiet protectors, sent to watch over us. However, that means we also have to do our part and look after them. Having a dog is a huge responsibility. Far too many people underestimate just how much work is involved in caring for a dog because it's not just about playing in the park and cuddling. It's about visits to the vets, worries when they're not well, and the colossal sadness when their days are over. Julie Clam and her family took a considerable step to foster dogs in need. The emotional toll was enormous, but each dog found a loving home and caring owners. There is a reason why many dogs become support animals. The strength and companionship they provide are second to none. A child growing up with a dog will always have a best friend by their side. An older person with a dog as a companion will never be lonely. In so many ways, we can say that dogs are silent, kind of, angels. They may not be able to speak words of comfort when you're feeling down, but their presence gives you the sense that you're not alone. They teach you about sacrifice and compromise, and just like Julie Clam, you'll find that you quickly become addicted to the deep and soulful eyes of a dog. Try this. Every dog is different, but many breeds have traits. Do some research into dog breeds and find your ideal match. Try a little doggy massage. Dogs love to be tickled behind their ears as it helps them to relax. Think very carefully before you decide to get a dog. Do you have the time? Be honest, as a dog will depend on you for everything.